Getting stuck into our rookie rankings now and a little bit of movement across the top five. One player coming in, that's Harvey Thomas. It was actually, it was in the top five after opening round. One of the, the I guess, only five that actually featured in the first weekend of the season. He was pretty impressive. His first game might have fallen off just a touch, um, but a lot of competition obviously came in in round one, but shot straight back into it round two. A fantastic effort against um, the Eagles on Sunday. Kicked a goal, I think assisted a couple more. Um, seven also scoring involvements, but laid heaps of tackles, 20 plus touches. Uh, probably unfortunate not to actually break into you know fourth or higher, but uh, I think another performance like that could see him really gunning for a podium spot um, at the end of round three. But yeah, he comes in, replaces Zane Dersma in our top five. And then just looking at the rest of the leaderboard there. So Harley Reid uh, holds his spot at four. Kayla Windsor falls from second to third, and that sees Colby McCurchie go up to the second spot. And Blake House has just been... Uh, I think very efficient, very consistent across his three games. I think you look at his his debut and opening round and maybe the, the game against Hawks on the weekend. Took maybe a little bit of time to find his feet again, but um, really thrived under a bit more pressure as well when May and Lever were, were unable to see out the game and he had to kind of take a bit more of a workload on in defense. And for a guy in his third game, I, I thought he was stellar. So yeah, he certainly gets to hold on to the top spot in our rookie rankings. Yeah, I think with you know, a player like Blake Cowes, he's not going to get the most decorated stats, the most possessions, mm. you know. But he does just those little team things that I think the D's are looking at bringing back into their game, that kind of that premiership year where everyone's just doing those one percenters. I mean, we saw Chris Pachaka run from full forward to full back to spoil an easy an easy Hawthorne goal to, you know, yeah. put it through the, 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 the behinds. Um, and that's why I think Blake House is in that side. It probably gives free, um, freedom to Stephen May sure. and Jake Lever prior to them going down during the game um, to kind of peel off their opponents, uh, which is why we still believe, yeah, Blake House is definitely taking that number one spot in our rookie rankings. Um, but with Colby and Kircher coming and rivaling him at the top of the, the leaderboard there, we wouldn't be surprised if we do see a bit of movement there. Um, but McKercha mm. against the Dockers under the, the roof at Etihad Stadium was, was super impressive. He's a lethal left foot kick uh they love to get the balls in ball in his hands um you know he, he's so yeah. attacking kind of like that Sheasel role from last year and David Dacos the year before that so it's exciting for North fans he probably does have a little bit of work to do on the defensive side of things but I think that just comes with time and experience in the game obviously he's only played you know two games so throwing mm -hmm. him into the walls is definitely a hard yeah, task for anyone but it's a it's an interesting one when you've got both of them like Sheasel and and McCurchin I think Maybe it is just a move like they did last year just to get him to find the ball a bit easier, an easier way to, to get the ball in his hands. And like you said, he's a lovely kick. And maybe it's a matter of, you know, he'll maybe be a lot more midfield uh, exposed later in the season. Like they got Sheasel in there by the end of last year and he looked fantastic in the middle, even though he was drafted as a small forward and players as a defender. So it's, it could just be a confidence and, and comfort thing. And ideally, I don't think McKercher stays in the back line all year like yeah. Sheasel did for a lot of last year. Um, and they, that they can really get um, yeah, a bit more out of McKercher through the middle. Yeah, obviously Harley Reid with his trademark fend-off uh, on Stephen Cornelio. I mean, we're hoping to see that somewhat soon, but um, yeah. you know, to be in, I guess, round two <laughs> against quite a, an experienced player and a, and a good player in Looks Stephen good. Cornelio, it was um, I've definitely got Eagles fans excited, definitely got AFL fans <laughs> excited to see that kind of play. Um, obviously, we've seen Harley Reid in his in his draft year and the highlights, and we thought, you know, could he do that potentially at the AFL level? And it seems like seemingly he can. He's definitely not shy to, you know, get physical with players who are definitely bigger than him or experienced than him, mm. have the runs on the board that he hasn't got yet. So he's definitely one to watch and will be one to watch as the, the year unfolds, despite maybe the Eagles' on-field performances maybe not matching up to his. Sure. Yeah, and then obviously just Caleb Windsor. Nothing against his game too much. Maybe probably quieter out of the three he's had, but just some good form from McKercher. And I think he's going to feel a bit of a pinch from um, from Reed and the likes of Thomas. And a couple honourable mentions, I think, to Sanders, Seth Campbell, Darcy Wilson. Um, Sean Manor looked okay in, in, in his first full game for Geelong. So, yeah, there's going to be plenty more competition to come in our rookie rankings over the next few weeks.